What's going on, Fortnite fam? Welcome to the FNCS Finals. It's the last stop for Chapter 2 Season 6 of the FNCS. I know, I'm so worried, but I'm also elated because we get to hang out with our very best friends in the world. It's Shia Wager, it's Kelly. Friends, how are you guys feeling? We have six matches ahead of us and we crowded champions! How are you feeling? My hype is only increasing after every single region and for any West, the stories we're building here, the six games we have to watch, Zeke, it's gonna be phenomenal. I'm feeling great. Kelly, what about you? I am feeling absolutely ecstatic. I feel like the last two seasons, it was pretty obvious who the champions were gonna be, even going into day number two. Even though that it was obviously like not that, like in second place, it was Arkham Rex and Epic Whale coming out of day one last season. And then they were able to do pretty well consistently in day number two. But this time, I think it's kind of up in the air. We have two teams that are really giving them a run for their money. So this might be an opportunity for us to crown a new champion for NA West. Mmm, the storylines develop. The plot thickens. We'll see. We'll get there in a little bit. But first, we got to talk about a few things. You guys know this is our last stop on the day. But if you like what you're seeing, come back next time we do this. Because we go from EU to NA East. We end right here in NA West. Six matches are out ahead of us. How did we make it here, though? Man, this is just hitting me all at once. This is the last show of the FNCS. Uh, let's take a look at our overall tournament format bracket. You've seen this. You know, like, I, you already envisioned it. The moment I said those words in your mind, you're like, oh, right, that graphic. Yes, finals, center of your screen. We made it here. 33 of the very best trios in all of NA West have made it here, Shia Wager and Kelly. And now, with six games, there can only be one FNCS trios champion. Absolutely, and the way they made it here was so interesting. For NA West, one of the teams that ended up qualifying automatically last season broke up. Because of that, we have an extra reboot round. We only had two trios coming in from that last auto qual side. Still, they all have to play 12 games no matter where they came from over two days, Kelly, and that's where stuff gets really intense. I mean, the story, too, of that second place team from season five breaking up Kenshi and Snacky now in first place after picking up Fads. But of course, Chris is there as well in our top 10. He's in sixth place right now with Falconer and Re. So to see a team be able to break up, join new players and still perform as they are. I mean, we have six more games to go. This is a 12 game final series. And of course, to be able to claim first place, you're going to have to collect a few points. You can see right there there's going to be 33 teams competing you're only going to start getting placement points if you make it to 24th place climbing all the way up getting those points incrementally depending on where you place all the way up until fourth place that jump from fourth to third that's two points from third to second is another two points but first place is going to be such a big difference that right there is going to be 30 points we got to see a 15 elimination victory royale yesterday so that right there is a 60 point game anything can happen in these next six games yeah the elims matter to two points per but still this all leads up to that final grind grand prize na west three hundred thousand dollars on the line for them so far we can delve in and see the specifics of the region as well it's so huge too and it's close all the way towards the very end first place battling for seventy five thousand dollars second forty eight thousand and it goes all the way down tenth is where you have that big bump up of three thousand dollars and just to make you here you're gonna walk away with nine hundred this is not the only prize, though, Zeke. It's not just money these guys are fighting for. There's also a great in-game cosmetic item you can win for coming first place in your region. Shy Wager, I respect you so much for allowing me to uh, always talk about the Axe of Champions, the in-game pickaxe that I myself went into the forest, found gold, brought it back, digitized it, forged the Axe of Champions and put it in-game. None of this is real. I'm totally making all this up. But it is an in-game pickaxe that the trio will be able to hold. And in-game, everyone else that sees it will know they are your trio's champion. Now, we kind of touched on these other regions. There's one other region we have not crowned champions in. It's Brazil. That's right. And this one's going to be pretty fun. Uh, we just talked about this, we did, before the show began, so we can take a look at our overall winningest trio. It's Kadu, who just came back with a back-to-back -back FNCS win, so he defended the title. But Siyun and King, and this is World Cup uh, Top 5 King as well, they are your trio's champions. They will take hold of the Axe of Champions. Yeah, that first day was so phenomenal, back-to-back. -back. I believe it was top three on both days you guys are rolling in with. 34 total points the placements were looking good but it's the elims that set them apart with the combined placement to get them all the way towards the top 
another cool thing too is that first and second place you have the other king also rolling in with franz and Kito. So gonna be second place overall nyx and persa again in the top three back-to-back -back seasons auto calling rusty in fourth place had a phenomenal day two ended up first on the day and because of that elevates all the way up from fourth he was actually playing with king i believe in the previous seasons and we're looking at that rolling in they kind of came through in sixth place overall now all the way up in fourth you can see the improvement season after season kelly this was a very tight finish all the way towards the end yeah, I mean, only 21 points that separated first from second place right there. Kadu coming out of first place out of day number one. Didn't have as great of a performance today as they did yesterday, but it's all about consistency. We saw, it, it's very different what we saw from Europe, where the first place team, I think, had three victory royales, compared to North American East, where the first place team had zero victory royales. It really, honestly, is kind of anything can happen. It doesn't matter one particular play style. It doesn't matter if the team that holds height wins it's all kind of just very well variables that you have to be able to play towards hey it's all about taking your destiny into your own hands as a trio and walking away with the victory royale at all costs now we got to talk about the trios we're going to be viewing today if you missed out on the competition yesterday don't worry we've got some cool highlights to run through shy wager and kelly they're going to break down all the action they're going to get you up to speed Getting you guys up to speed is the name of the game right now. Obviously, Chris right here with an incredible first performance. That was game number one that we got to see that victory royale. Game number two, it went down to Domo, Unsightly, and Glace right there, grabbing a victory royale from Height with 12 eliminations. Yeah, it was amazing to see all throughout the day. It was just momentum back to back to the back. We rolled in with game three. Wheels and Caleb started to finally show that type of domination that they have, the synergy rolling in towards the day. Once we went past the break, looked at game number four and how things rolled over there. Nate, Riverside, Blizzy showed us how a secret agent strategy can really help you end up winning a game. Sometimes it's not about playing together as a trio, but really helping out your team by making crazy individual plays. Riverside dropped down, interrupted all the different teams, and this really shook up the leader boards. Yeah, they were in eighth place before that game, so that victory royale obviously rocking them up into our fifth place spot. But now we have to take a look at Trix, Regulator, and Moni there. Moni able to grab the victory royale with only seven eliminations, but still every point counts here. And finally, the last victory royale of the day, it's the team in the first place spot. That's going to be Kinchy, Snacky, and Fabs right there. It ended up being a 3v1 against Spidey's team, and that was the victory royale that they had 50 Teen eliminations, and that's why they're now in our first place spot. But Shio, there is only one point that separates first from second place. This has to be the closest day number two that we've seen start so far. Absolutely, and thank you for that, Fabs, Kenshi, and Snacky, because this one point difference, not only that, the teams that they were taken out, it made everything closer all together with their final victory royale. Now you have Arkham Rex and Epic Will right behind their seven point difference in second place. Everyone's kind of inching closer and closer. The real gap kind of happens between sixth and fifth place. You're looking at Falconer's team and Riversons. There's still a chance for everyone to basically catch up. You know how different day two can be, but these top three teams, the top five, are kind of battling it out at the top. I'm, I'm a little scared to look at these teams right here in our 11th through 20th place spot. Some big names right here, obviously in our 11th place spot. That's Macon, Poodle, gotta love the name, and Wavy Jacob right there. But with 107 points, they're only 80 points away from first place right there. We've seen teams in our first place spot. that we have with higher eliminations like Hop Clippers and Twitter uh, Health able to possibly grab a few good games here and jump up into our top 10. Yeah, and it's not only the fact that they're 80 points behind kind of, you know, the first place teams or that big upper echelon. The big thing here is that there's so many teams side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Look at the points, 107 only going down to about 80. That's like half a game or just a little bit of placement. Look at 98 points to 96 from 13th to 14th. Jagveer right beside Temple and Zinc right below them. They're tied. So for any West, it's a very, very close race. Zeke, we're breaking out of points. One elimination could jump you up two placements. Getting placements will get you all the way towards the top of the board. It's a very close race. It's already too close, man. Once again, just looking at the standings, you guys know if you followed the, the comp team for a while, you know I just like to stress about these things, even though it's out of my hands, but I'm already stressed, okay? Because I want everybody to have acts of champions because I love everybody too much. Now, we got to kind of talk about 
the predictions, all right? Our thoughts on which trios could walk away with the with the title. Now, uh, the outlier here is actually Sundown. Uh, you guys and Clay are all kind of in the same ballpark, right? The trio coming out from last season, coming back. Sundown's trio, though, coming in 23rd on the day, only 65 points. Shy, I mean, do you think this trio can go the distance? Can they make up that deficit? The best thing for a team on day one that's looking to come back is not having a good performance, right? Because that's where the comeback story starts. Making all your mistakes on the first day means you can have some six great games coming into day two. I believe in the comeback potential. Now, do I think they can hit all the way up in first? Yes, as well, because we see the top teams kind of battling each other and stealing points away. No one's really pushing mm. forward with a clear lead. So it's possible. On the other side, though, Kelly, for Arkham Rex and Epic Will, they're coming in third place off of day one. Is this like a good spot to be in? Or should we be worried for the God Trio trying to win NA West back to back to back? No one is worried whatsoever. After season five, we saw Arkham Rex and Epic Will. They were in second place. Obviously, that's not third place, but I do think that the point difference is kind of the same thing right there. I mean, they didn't place below 10th, and they had several third place finishes yesterday, but that's consistent. That's important. That's good. They're not getting these crazy games, though, that like Fabs, Kenshi, and Snacky are getting. And we know that can make or break a team right there. They have a pretty good drop spot, even when they're not making it all the way to zone nine or zone eight, wherever the end game is. Like, they're still grabbing at least four or five eliminations every single time. So, Shio, they're definitely not out. I think actually that all the teams that we have in our top five right now are within contention of first place. Uh, they definitely have a potential, you know, definitely to pop off. A note, though, also on Quinn's team, we're talking about back-to-backs for Rex Epic Whale. That man, I was checking his socials out, back-to-back 4.0 GPAs while he's, you know, educating himself up. So he can have the brains to what? fix up those mistakes from day one. He can roll through while playing Fortnite and studying over and have a crazy day. I'm excited to see it. Okay, I guess he's just built different. That's okay and an acceptable <laughs> answer, I guess. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Fortnite fam, we hope you guys are ready because it is time to kick off the second day of competition. If you're watching at Party Royale, what a Party Royale! You know how much I love you. I hope you enjoy these games. But for now, we're sending it over to Clay and Sundown, our casters for NA West. Gentlemen, say hello. Oh, hello there. Thank you so much, Zeke, Shio, and Kelly, and what is up, Fortnite family? Welcome. It's closing time, and where every new beginning is some other beginning's end.